In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an invasive floor plan where the background is black and the line work is white. I'm going to walk you through all the knock-on effects and the opportunities we have with that drawing as well. Let's get into it. Right, so here's our floor plan in CAD in a bit of a, a bit of context. See some contour lines and the like. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot this to PDF. We're not going to put it on a sheet or anything. We'll just do a quick quick plot straight out of the, the model file. Set it to A2. Again, you know, this should really be on a sheet as you can set it to scale, but we're just trying to show the principle of an inverted floor plan. <clears throat> Let's save that to the desktop, and there it is. And you can see there, that's obviously what a typical drawing would look like. White background, black line work. If we then just drop that into Photoshop, drop the resolution to 200 just so it's not too heavy. New layer, and then give it a, a black background, and then invert the drawing with Control I, and duplicate that with Control J, just to give it a little boost. Merge them two, and call that drawing. Then create a new layer beneath the drawing. But with the drawing layer selected, get the magic wand. Have the the uh, like addition um, mode selected. <coughs> Save your hold and shift. And then select all the external walls. Then jump back to the layer you want to colour. And we're going to give this a <clears throat> an orangey, orangey red sort of colour, just something that contrasts the uh, the dark background. And we're going to call that external walls. Try and keep the layering as, as neat as possible. Then we're going to move into the internal walls. Again with the drawing layer. Select it and be careful to not select on the line work. That's what just happened then. So I'll go over that area with a brush. And do a new layer. Call that internal walls. Okay, it's looking okay already. Then we're going to emphasize the floor plate. I'm not being too accurate, I'm just trying to show you the principle of these things. Maybe keep that. No. Or maybe go darker. Yeah, that's better. Subtlety is always the, the best way. Okay, <clears throat> then what we want to do is we want to duplicate the wall layers and call it shadows. And you just want to offset them, you know, roughly 45 degrees. Just using the arrow keys to, to set it. Desaturate. And then just drag the brightness right down. go one more and then we're going to select the 
colour. And then you're just going to draw these diagonals. Like so, I'm gonna go again, we're gonna go into add mode. And what we're doing is we're just connecting the shadows basically to the walls, otherwise it looks a little bit detached. And again, I'm not being too precise, it doesn't need to be. This is what I would call more of an illustration than a, a proper drawer, and if you like, that's trying to you know portray accurate information. Okay, just colour over that. And give that a a blade of two pixels. Now with the internal walls, with the with them being a, a little thinner, <clears throat> I think we can get away with just offsetting them. So duplicate, rename, and then desaturate, and then bring the brightness down. Got a few signs. And then filter blur, control F, or oh sorry, alt control F now, and um, repeat the previous filter command, which is handy. And now again, you can see you're just getting that little bit of depth in the walls, just creates a bit of sense of three dimensions. You could even duplicate that just to emphasize it a bit more, could do something like that. See how that's doing a bit of a better job now, actually. And you can mess with the colouring of that. That might have been a little bit too subtle. Let's go for 35. Oh, maybe 30. <clears throat> you can start to see the shadow in now properly. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the furniture. Now notice the direction of the shadows. So we want to keep that consistent. Let's do a new layer, furniture, but then with the drawing layer selected, let's give this a bit of a, like a steely blue colour. I'm just gonna. Ah, oh, brother on layer. Typical. I'm just tidying it up. Sometimes the magic wand can be a little bit scruffy, so I'm just tidying it up in the middle there. <coughs> Set that to say 25. Then same again, duplicate that. And then just offset at a similar source of distance. And then what we want to do is we want to just delete this lower portion. Because none of that is actually affecting the appearance of the shadow. So there we are. Uh, actually, let me just call that table and chairs shadow, and then table and chairs. Soft blade again. Uh, I'm sorry.
maybe lift that to say 35. <clears throat> Okay, that'll do us. Now, <clears throat> what is a good idea is let's group that and, and then call it furniture. So that's what I've done the first time. <clears throat> then I'm going to duplicate them too. So I've got the original data. And then I'm going to merge them too. And then call it table and chairs full. And it makes it your life that bit easier. copying it round, but then if you want to make any edits, you've got the originals as well. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to speed the video up there to just go work through the rest of the furniture and then we'll make some finishing touches to the, the context. <laughs> So we're back after doing the furniture. Drop some shadows on. We didn't bother with the with the toilets. You could um, just as a quick one when you've got these like small fiddly areas, you could actually just do a little layer underneath them all. And just give yourself a, a really soft brush. And just just kind of trace around them. It's not the neatest in the world at all. Forget me shoot me key shortcuts. That kind of does the job. You know when you when you've got your smaller areas and you don't really want to go through that the whole process. <coughs> Just spotted these as well. Let's see. Let's just get these. <clears throat> um, now, see the way I've lost the colour there. Actually, right. Just lift it back to a hundred percent, and then pick it. There we are. Back to the right layer. Again, we could just go back to the well, maybe do another layer shadows two. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but as long as everything's on the right layer, you can, you can get away with a certain level of neatness. Okay, I think that's looking really nice. Quite creative, isn't it? Quite graphic. And then obviously now what we're doing is we're moving on to the the context. So we still want to emphasize certain things here. <clears throat> so there's this there's this footpath. That goes around the building. I'm just holding shift on these square areas. So let's collapse that group. Let's put all these into a group as well. Call that building. And then a new layer outside of that. Let's call it footpaths. A nice kind of buff colour. Deselect. Let's just take the building from that, let's just cut that out. And then again, give that a bit of subtlety. Maybe just drop the saturation of it as well. That's nice. 
that helps us emphasize the shadows along the top there as well and the furniture there I think that's working quite well and then one last little <clears throat> little touch is to just call the trees out so we can mess with the color in a minute let's just get let's just pick a, <clears throat> a random green lift the hardness to say 50 percent and then just a very simple trees let's group them into context just change how you're approaching each one a little bit I'm using the bracket keys by the way to increase and decrease my brush sizes same again keep it subtle and then just mess with the saturation you don't want anything too bold I think it'll, it'll draw the eye away so just drop the saturation maybe even just go 10% and then actually change your mind on the ones that are kind of inner I think it's nice when it's just bleeding over the edge a little bit and then while we're in the right sort of settings in terms of opacity and what have you you could actually just flick to the other colour palette and maybe just just give a slightly different tone to some of the trees that wants to just drop a touch further though And there we are. There's our inverted floor plan. I think that'll look nice on a on a presentation board. <clears throat> if you've got any questions, drop me an email at adam at arcademia.com.